Is that right? Look at that. Yeah. Fitting alright? Yeah. Alright. Sure. Okay. Ah, okay. oh, right, okay. Good, good, good point. Okay, I'm Ian Farrow. Um, I uh, lead the uh, uh, design, build, and test part of the uh, research development program uh, for AXIS, along with my colleagues. Um, the, um, the work involves design, build, and test of an advanced composite structure. Um, the students, first of all, uh, work in teams to uh, create a design um, for the required task. And this year, the task is a, a cantilevered um, UAV box bar. As uh, everyone knows, uh, the first step for any kind of design is uh, have a starting point. Uh, to get this starting point, you need uh, hand calculation. And uh, surprise, we did the same also for this project. As an initial step for the hand calculation, we assume that our tapering box is a rectangular box, then bottom and top and bottom part carries on the bending load, so they are just zero degree plies and webs are carrying the shear load so they are just plus and minus 45 degree plies and with this using these assumptions you can guess roughly what's gonna be the number of how many number of plies you will use and as well as which material you can use to meet these criteria. It was really interesting to try to keep the safety factor just a little bit uh, bigger than the required one but not too big because otherwise uh, i discovered that you're gonna have uh, too much material and uh, the structural object is gonna be too heavy we start with the initial calculations because it's important to define rough estimate at the beginning before using the the, comp uh, the computational and time expensive models at the beginning Today we're doing some materials testing. The materials testing will be to find out what kind of properties the um, material that we're going to be using, which is pre-pregged carbon fiber, how it behaves. Currently we're testing 90 degree laminates, which means that the fiber orientation is left to right instead of up and down. The materials testing was carried out to determine the material properties of our layup um, as compared to what would appear in the data sheets or any literature. Materials testing is important because we don't know exactly how the material will behave. Carbon fiber behaves differently in different situations and so we need to know exactly how the material that we're using will behave. String gauges were attached during testing to some of the coupons as well as using DIC to determine the string. This was used because each have their flaws and their merits so using both simultaneously could hopefully offer some redundancy. Having done the refined hand calculations and having done some materials testing to get some more accurate materials data, we're now able to go and start looking at some finite element uh, models. This is the first time we'll have seen a makeup of the model in, in a program like this. And the model allows us to, to kind of better see the properties of our beam and what our beam is doing, how it's deflecting, when the buckling, is it twisting the right amount. And with this result, we can compare with our handle calculation so that we can verify our uh, design before and also optimize our uh, structure and to minimize the cost and the material. It's also a good guide for the, uh, for the full scale test in the, in the third step. For our manufacturing process, we needed to create a mold and we went with a two-part mold design to allow an easy demolding process. 
So we're going to be manufacturing a box beam section and to make that happen we would have to use a male tool which is actually removable because it's tapered in one side. Uh, so the reason why we're using this is because we'll get good surface accuracy especially where with the location of the ply drops and uh, just good fiber orientation control with that. Um, so we've uh, prepared our beam, we've went through several steps in design uh, such as end calculation or FA analysis and we've uh, realized a design that we think is the best for what we can achieve and now we're going to produce our beams. To laminate uh, each of our applied we have to follow a very strict uh, process in order to do so. Uh, first we have to lay down the plies and put pressure on it in order to have perfect a flat surface without any defect on it. To manufacture our beam section we're going to be using glass fibre pre-preg. Now the reason why we're using pre-preg rather than you know dry fibres and adding resin to it and infusing the resin to it manually, uh, the reason behind that is because pre-preg you'll have a better fibre uh, volume fraction control so the amount of resin and the fibres is quite controlled. We just finished laying up the beam and we are about to load, load it in to the autoclave for curing. The autoclave applies high temperature and high pressure which will activate the catalyst and promotes the curing of the epoxy. The high pressure will hopefully remove all the bubbles or the remaining bubbles within the laminate. Once the curing cycle is finished, we'll be moving it down to the workshops and carrying out the secondary operations, which include trimming as well as drilling. Uh, so the beam's already been prepared. We've, uh, we've done all the machining, all the trimming, and now we're preparing the surface of the beam to, get, to put on the strain gauges. Um, so this will be used in a test to record the strains. So the next step is to, to obviously prepare also the DAC speckled pattern to measure strains at very specific area uh, much more precisely. After we design and build, now we're gonna test the beam the measurement we use for this test is the strain gauge, the LVDT to measure the deformation and the load cell to measure the load applied to the beam. So we've got the wiffle tree arrangement because it mimics the loading of a real wing rather than just having a point load which wouldn't be very realistic. Um, and we will first load that to limit load, 1000 newtons, where we hope our beam will not break. Then we'll crank it up more to 1,500 newtons, at which point, just after we hope, we see fracture, which we will capture with the uh, high-speed camera. To calculate the strain on the front whip and around the, the inspection hole, and then we can convert this strain to the strain that we calculate in the analytical and the modeling and then we can compare our calculation, our modeling, and the actual beam. So we're here in the composites testing area of Queen's Building. We've just finished the actual testing procedure of our beam. So we've got all of our DIC, our strain gauge data, and we actually managed to capture the uh, failure on our high-speed camera. So now the job is, now that we've done the testing, to go away and try and look at how the test results correlate um, to what we predicted using our analytical and our experimental models. So obviously now we've got quite a bit of data, we've got to sift through, make sense of it. Once that's done, we'll then accommodate it all into a big final report. And then once we submit that, that's uh, 
that's really DBT finished for us.